What is up, you beautiful people? Welcome to my first entry of my half marathon prep. I'm going to take you guys along the entire way. I'll be running my half marathon on April 27th, 2024. This will be my very first ever running thing. I've ran a couple of 5Ks over the last six months. I've incorporated running into my training and have really enjoyed it. And I wanna show you guys exactly how it is a part of my life and how I'm getting ready for it alongside all of the work that I have to do, all of my training in the gym because I'm going to continue to retain all the muscle tissue that I have currently, if not able to gain a little bit of muscle tissue throughout that process and showing you guys my nutrition in a much more intimate process with these vlogs and giving you guys an inside look of exactly everything I am doing. The marathon prep started in a little bit of an unorthodox way as I was supposed to be starting the prep right after Christmas. And the day after Christmas, I came down with pneumonia. So we're about two weeks behind of where I should be within the prep, which is not a big deal as I will be able to play a little bit of catch up here on the front end and get right back into the swing of things. When we talk about my running, I am supposed to be at 14 miles per week this week currently, and that will be progressing. And we will show you guys all of that through these vlogs. Now, as I'm coming off of pneumonia, I lost 17 pounds <laughs> during the time of being sick. Not ideal as I'm starting this prep. And so I've been getting my nutrition back into alignment. I've been gaining the weight back and feeling as though that I'm back, uh, almost back to the strength that I need to have in the gym and feeling comfortable with my running routine. As I get back to the running and being at the 14 miles, as you can imagine, two weeks completely off of running, jumping right back to that allotment would be a lot. And so I'm running as much as I can, but it's more of a run walk for this particular week. And then as I continue to progress, I will get to a point where I'm running all the miles that I am scheduled to run. With my resistance training, I am training four days per week. I have two lower body sessions and I have two upper body sessions spread across the entirety of the week. And to come back to the tr running, I am running three to four times per week at the moment. Today is one of those upper body sessions. And in this session, we are going to be training mostly back. My volume with training is a little lower coming off of my time being sick. And I would like to give you guys a few tips because I know many of you are coming off of being sick as well. And I've been working with many of my clients to get them back into the gym and back into their normal routine. So the three things that I would focus on getting back in the gym after being sick. Number one is that nutrition and sleep are the most important pieces to get back into alignment. Have a couple days of your nutritional intake back at your baseline that was prior to when you were sick, as well as getting a full night of sleep for multiple nights before we get back into the gym. Number two, when you get back into the gym, start with full body or half body training sessions at a lower RPE to get the wheels churning, to get you back into the movement patterns. It's not time for you to get right back into your scheduled training just yet. And number three is give yourself time before you evaluate how you're looking. You're going to look a little bit softer. Your muscle bellies are not going to be as full of glycogen as they were prior to being sick. Give yourself a week or two back into routine, hitting your food, getting your sleep, getting your water in and hitting your training sessions before you get too critical of how you're looking. Today's pull session is going to be centered around strength. And the first two movements, got to get back into the swing of this. This is tougher than I remembered. I always like make it much easier in my head before we get back into it. Today's pull session is centered around strength and we're gonna be opening with two of my favorite lat based movements. Let's get into it. Our first movement is going to be the thoracic pull around. So to quickly review the different divisions of the lat, we have the upper division, which is going to be considered the thoracic and those fibers are gonna run mostly horizontally. And then we're going to have a meatier portion to that lat, kind of the, the middle portion. And these fibers are going to run at a 45 degree angle. And this division is going to be called the lumbar division of the lat. We have the third division, which these fibers are going to run mostly vertical, and they're going to be at the lower portion of that lat. And these are the iliac fibers of the lat. Now, what we're doing in this particular movement with the thoracic pull around is that we're training the thoracic division in the lengthened position. So we're trying to bias when that portion of the lat is 
the furthest point from the insertion in the origin as far apart as possible to create as much tension there. And what we know from research is that this is a great position for us to be in to gain as much hypertrophy as possible. And so in the beginning of this, yes, I'm chasing strength, but this is a great movement to prioritize overall hypertrophy as well. As I was getting things set up, this is obnoxious. Like I'm in my home gym and I can be as obnoxious as I want to be, but I know at your gym, you probably taking two benches in this fashion is probably not going to happen. So you could, you could just use this bench and lean back a little bit, put your forearm on the, the bench here and still be able to pull around. I'm using the second bench, so I have a little bit of greater extension to this hand, and I feel more stability by extending at the elbow and pushing into that as I'm doing the pulling motion, but it still would work if I was only able to use just this bench. For my working sets in this exercise, I'm going to be titrating my RPE. So I have four sets of six repetitions. My goal is to go up every single set in weight as my RPE goes up as well. So my first set, I'm shooting for a seven RPE, performing six repetitions. And I will report back to you after the set to see if I hit that and if I'm gonna be going up with set number two. Let's see how this feels. Set number one was at an RPE of seven. I ended up going from 110 on that first set. And for my second set, I'll be going to 130 pounds with the goal of being at an eight RPE for this set. Between each of my working sets, I have two minutes of rest and I will have a small amount of time of resting between arms just to kind of catch my breath a little bit because I do not want the fatigue from the first arm that I'm performing to hinder my performance in the second arm. So I'll give myself a little bit of time before starting the second arm if I need it. Set number two complete, RPE of eight was achieved. I'm still going to go up going into my third set. Probably not 20 pounds again, probably just going to go up 10 and shooting for a nine RPE with the opportunity to hit failure in my fourth set. 
find a ten. If you were counting, I did seven repetitions there instead of six. And the reason being for that is that my goal was to be at an RPE of nine. As I was hitting that sixth repetition, I realized that I was not at an RPE of nine and I probably should have maybe gone up. But since I'm already in the set, I'll get another repetition and get me a little bit closer to that RPE of nine than if I would have just stopped at six. So that is some of the acclimation that you can do in your training if you find yourself in the same position. Okay. Going into my final set here, the biggest goal that I have is to reach failure. I'm going to go up and wait from my third set and I have a repetition target of six, but if I get to six and I've got more, I'm gonna keep going. And if I get to seven and I've still got more, I'm gonna keep going. If I, after going up, only have five and I fail after that fifth repetition, that's okay because my biggest goal within this set is to reach failure, not the arbitrary have to get six total repetitions. With my final set, having the goal of failure, as you saw, I got more than six. And with those six repetitions, they were more partials, or the repetitions past the six rep were more partials. And the reason that that is okay in this particular setting is because I was still controlling the weight. And as I talked about prior to starting this exercise, the goal of this is the lengthened portion of the exercise when my arm is fully extended is where tension is going to be greatest during this exercise. And so by getting those lengthened partials, I'm still getting great work and staying within the goal of the particular exercise. I could have waited for my breath there. Sheesh. it. 
today, my left arm performed better in this exercise than my right arm. And that is what it is for today. I will say that with vertical movements, my right arm is often a little bit stronger than my left. So our next movement is going to be a vertical cable pull down and we'll see if my right arm redeems itself. We have four sets of six in this movement as well with a titrating RPE of seven, eight, nine, and two failure for the last set. You will notice as I'm going through the pull down that I am slightly leaning into the arm that I'm pulling down. I'm slightly just rotating my upper body a little bit to create a greater lengthening to my lat. It's a very subtle difference. Is it going to make a difference? Maybe, and I'm willing to take the opportunity of a 1% improvement to the exercise if I have the opportunity to do so. But is it going to be, you know, you're doing it 100% wrong if you don't have that slight rotation? No, but any opportunity that I can get a little bit extra, I'm going to take it. Oh. In the gym, you may be asking yourself, why can I do more weight on the adjustable pulley that goes up and down over the pulley that's just a pull down like this one here? So the adjustable cable is a four to one stack, meaning whatever the weight is, you're getting basically a fourth of that load. Whereas a single cable pulley like this, where you're not able to adjust it, is a two to one cable. And so, if I was to have 100 pounds on both of these, I would be getting 50 pounds on the vertical, and then I would be getting 25 pounds on the adjustable cable. And the cable length from this one is actually going to be longer. So you'd also be able to pull the cable further away, whereas the two to one cable is just going to be shorter in nature as well. As I'm going through this pull down, you'll notice that I'm scooted back as far as I can on the seat. I am leaning back while crunching down on my abdomen. And the reason for that is that that positioning allows for my elbow to stay in front of my body and keep my upper arm tight to my side. And with the intention of training lats, that upper arm positioning is going to be the best for me to lengthen and shorten the lat throughout the entirety of the exercise. Okay, set number three. With that being my third set, I went for going up in load and probably overshot a little bit and got much closer to failure on that set than I should have because now going into my fourth set, my goal is getting to that failure threshold. So I'm going to maintain load and focus on getting to that full range of motion 
And if that means that I only get three or maybe even just four repetitions that are full range of motion all the way through the contractile range, that is going to be my goal for this next set. snuck up on me. <laughs> I was real crisp through my first three on that right arm and uh, then fourth got to about 70% range and then went for that fifth and got maybe 50. So push the boundaries a little bit today. I'm happy with the intention and the intensity. One thing I'm going to note in my logbook is that I should either stay at this weight or even maybe decrease the load a little bit to hit my repetition goal next week. That's a wrap for lats. And now we're going into a superset that is a rear delt horizontal row paired with a behind the back cable lateral raise. And so we're gonna be training the medial delts and the lateral raise. And with this rear delt row, one thing that I really wanna drive home to you guys is that as I am starting the row, my first initiating reaction is not to shrug my shoulders and pull the load back with my traps my first movement is going to be breaking at the elbow and driving my elbows out. And I'm going to initiate by pulling this way. By doing so, it is going to create a greater bias towards my rear delt. If I just immediately shrug with my shoulders, my traps and everything in my upper back is going to have a greater majority of the load. But by breaking at the elbows first, I'm able to drive the elbows out and back keeping my rear delt in the bias position. And as I get to the end range, at that point is when I'm going to slightly retract and find that fully shortened position of the rear delt. Oh. 
So the regular season just concluded and the Packers got in to the playoffs with the last seed. So they are on a winning streak to end the season. Jordan Love, who is the um, new quarterback, it is a, I mean, now it is another great quarterback in the Packers franchise. We went from Brett Favre, who was my childhood hero. I had 20 Brett Favre jerseys. I still, I was watching an interview of him today and he was going over old stories and I was like, I remember that as a child. I absolutely, to my core, love Brett Favre. Now, post career for Brett Favre, he's had a rocky road. You know, he's, he's done some not so good things, but the childhood hero that he was will make me never dislike him. <laughs> then we went on to Aaron Rodgers who is also a childhood um, hero of mine and now into adulthood, someone I absolutely love. Some of you may not agree with what he does off the field, but I love him. And now we have Jordan Love, who is now my adult hero <laughs> and has played amazing on the latter half of the season and got the Packers into the playoffs. Now, they do play the Dallas Cowboys, who are one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now, and many have them as the favorite to win the Super Bowl. I am not scared. The Packers still have a sliver of a chance. And as I've said throughout the training, a sliver of hope for me is enough to believe that it can happen. And they're going down to Dallas this weekend for the first round of the playoffs. And I am hopeful that they keep it close with an opportunity to potentially win the ball game. So um, an awesome first year for Jordan Love as the starter. And I'm excited for what the future holds as we have a very young team with a lot of potential on the horizon. <sighs> That is all we've got for that super set. We had three sets of eight repetitions. And when it comes to the accessory work, I'm not titrating my RPE up as I did for the two lap movements that I started the session with. I am very close to failure with all of my working sets. For these smaller muscle groups, I don't have as much training volume across the entirety of my training week.
We are heading into the final superset for today, and it is a bicep superset. So the first movement is going to be a single arm preacher curl, and then this is the second movement, and this is going to be a single arm supported uh, cable hammer curl. So this is going to be more for the brachialis, and then the preacher curl will be more for the bicep. And as we get into both of these, I'll give you guys a little walkthrough of why it's set up in the way that it is. With the preacher curl, and how I have this set up. You may have the preacher curl at your gym. You can sit down in the seat, but you wanna be as flush on the back part of your upper arm as you can with the pad. Like my armpit is pressed up against the, the top of this bench. And then as I am lowering this weight, I wanna have great control because as I lower this weight, this is going to be a very vulnerable position for my bicep, but also where I'm going to get the most results from this particular movement. So I want to have great tension here. And then how I'm going to curl is I'm going to initiate by pushing my upper arm into the pad and finding that fully contracted position and living in this eccentric lengthening portion, because this is, like I said, going to be the most bang for my buck for this exercise. And because I sat here and talked with you guys through that first like <laughs> very lengthened eccentric portion of the exercise, I'm gonna call it a rep short there because I'm starting to get a little tired. For the supported cable hammer curl, one of the things that we want to do to fully lengthen that brachialis as well as get into the fully contracted position is that I want to curl a little bit more across my body relative to curling out in front of me. And so with this support, it gives me an opposing force to press up against as I'm going through the motion. So I can get a little bit more output. I can use a little bit more weight by having the added stability and support of this here. Sheesh.
this is one of those movements where the drop off is so large. Like I can, if I'm going for, let's say eight repetitions as I am, I can go through five and feel like it's at an RPE of four or five. I feel like I've got ton left in the tank. And then I can go to that sixth rep and just hit a massive wall and then grind out getting to eight when I thought I had at least five or six repetitions left. So it's just one of those movements that sneaks up on you. Sneaks up on you. Failure is coming a little bit quicker than I would have liked. Um, I'll make a note of it in my training journal, but I'm just gonna finish off this last set and get as many reps as I can with the weight that I had scheduled and uh, hope for a better session next week. I could just be dealing with fatigue from the prior movements. Of course, my biceps are going to be a little bit involved within the pulling motions. It also could just be stemming from the fact of I'd been sick for two weeks and I'm just getting right back into the swing of training. And so I may just need to give myself a little bit of time. Um, next session will be better. And I'm not stressing over like, oh my gosh, I'm weaker than my last session or that I've lost muscle tissue. I understand that every day of training is going to look a little bit different and some of these small variables within weight used in different portions of the exercises are at different uh, portions of the training session are just going to look a little bit different and every day the most important thing is is that i'm in here and i'm, I'm training hard and i'm focused and if I'm, I'm checking those things off the, the list then i feel good about the session and i'm excited for the next one oh my gosh I may also be rushing because <laughs> we've got to record a podcast here in a little bit and I need to get through this session. So that could also be that I've shortened my rest periods and that is why I'm having a decrease in repetitions with the same weight.
That is a wrap for today's session. Leave us a comment below of what you guys want to see throughout this series. Do you wanna see more about my nutrition? Do you wanna have an inside look at the training and more in depth of what exactly I'm doing there? Do you wanna see more of the running? Um, do you wanna see more of the dogs? Do you wanna see more of how Sue and I interact, how I'm working? Whatever you guys want to see, we want to share with you. So leave us a comment below, let us know, and we'll see you in the next episode.